Good evening. How are you on this Saturday? Me, I'm doing pretty good. Just stopped by to share a word with you. I actually have this message on Wednesday because Wednesday are my days that I call winning Wednesday, like days to get us over through the hump day. And I tried to do it a little different by doing a presentation. So I put a nice little presentation together. I put some work into it, but I couldn't quite find out. I always just say I was having a little trouble with trying to upload it onto my YouTube channel. So we're just going to dive in today on Saturday and I'll come back next Wednesday with another word for winning Wednesday. Um, But I wanted to talk about pulling back. Pulling back. And in this season, we're going to have to pull back from a lot of things. We're going to have to pull back from, mm, pull back from people. That's one area we're going to have to do. We're going to have to, excuse me, pull back from people because, you know, some, some people's time or season is up in our life right now. So it's like we have to pull back from them. And if we don't pull back from them, then God is going to pull. God will do it for us if we can't do it. If we don't do it willingly out of obedience, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures um, for you once I get to them, because I have about three that I would like to share with you. But again, this message was for winning Wednesday, but we're going to do it for (laughs) this Saturday um, today. And I'll come back next Wednesday with a with another word. And this message is titled pull back. And how many of you are familiar with distractions? And I'm just looking at the presentation from my phone so I can read from it. You know, I didn't do all this hard work for nothing. But um, before I get into it, let me just bow my head and pray. And I just want to say, Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that I have to be able to come before you, to be in your presence to be able to come and share a word. So I ask you, Father God, that you allow me to decrease as you increase in me. I ask that you allow these words to be heard in the ears of those who will hear it and receive it in the hearts of those who will receive it, O Lord God. I ask that you allow it to minister to them, to speak to them, that they will be able to take this word and go and share it with someone else. And maybe that it confirms something that they have heard or read or seen. And I just want to say thank you. And let's get into this word. And again, this one is pull back. And I'm going to talk to you first about distractions. Distractions. In this season, we have had a lot of distractions. But distractions are little things in our life, are little things in your life that come to throw throw you off, off course. Distractions are things you don't see coming. Or you didn't see coming. It can be a major distraction. Or something minor. In this season it appears that there have been many distractions. We've had um, COVID. COVID COVID-19 has been a distraction. It has distracted many to the point of. To where it has affected them mentally. You know it has affected them physically. Um. You know, because we have a new strand out. So COVID has been a major distraction. And when I say distraction, I mean by even with the mask, um, the mask mandate. Should we wear a mask or should we not wear a mask? And in that, for me, I'm going to say let's use wisdom in all things. Because even though a person is vaccinated, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't wear a mask. And... You know, it's an extra layer of protection. So continue to wear your mask. Continue to wash your hands. Continue to sanitize. Um, Every now and then from time to time, let your windows up in your house to get some of that old stale air out. You know, Lysol spray every chance you get Lysol. Um, And just be mindful of who you let in and out of your house. You know, who you let come in and out of your house. No new people in your house. No new people. And the ones that are in there, 
take cover, take care of them and you all take cover and shelter together. Um, do things to help and boost, boost your immune system as well. Um, one thing I like to share that I have been doing, I have been drinking um, ginger, turmeric, and lemon. As a, I drink it as a tea. I warm it up and I drink it as a tea. I do take ginger shots. Um, try to get me some vitamin D in and vitamin C um, pills as well. Um, those are just things that I have been doing that wasn't a part of this message. But as I am talking about COVID, those are some things that we can do to try to boost our immune system and to keep ourselves going. As always, let's continue to pray. But let me get back to this message. Um, lack of employment. Homelessness, lack of finances, fear, and death have been some distractions in this season. And when I say death, don't um, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying death is a distraction, but I'm saying the way excuse me the way the media has been downplaying it, or just say playing it. When COVID first came out, there were so many deaths. There were like deaths on top of deaths, to where it had affected many mentally it affected a lot of people mentally and emotionally to be able to to um lose your loved ones and not to be able to be there to comfort them to you know a lot of people were quarantined in the house by themselves and they didn't have anybody to come help to see about them they didn't know what to expect they didn't know what to think they didn't know what was going to happen and that's what I mean about um, death being a distraction. I'm not saying death itself, but just the things with COVID where um, death was involved had been a distraction because the media downplayed it so much to all we heard was COVID this, COVID that, this death, this that. You know, there were so many deaths to where it was mind blowing. It was mind blowing. It still is mind blowing. So, um, that wasn't in his message either, but maybe somebody needs to hear that. But I just wanted, uh, maybe someone needs to hear that. So with that being said, let me just go into prayer. Mm. And again, this message is talking about pulling back. And we just talked about a couple of distractions that are going on. You know, family is a distraction. Family can be a distraction with things that are going on. Relationships can be a distraction. You know, um relationships can be a distraction um not trusting god can be a distraction so lord mm, go before us today make the rough places smooth and the crooked places straight be a light until our path and a lamp until our feet carry us through this day lord strengthen us in our areas of weaknesses you lord are the lifter of our head mm, thank you jesus Ooh, when others come against us, you hear our cry, Lord, in times of distress. You hear us, Lord, and sustain us. We can lay down and sleep peacefully. Peacefully, Lord, because you sustain us. And that came from Psalms, um, Psalms chapter 3, verse 3. So let me read that to you. But if you read the whole chapter of Psalms, verses 1 through 8, it will truly bless you. And I'm just going to start from there. And this was a song of David when he fled from Ab Absalom, his son. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many, many there be which say in my soul, there is no help for him in God. And this is the King James Version. But you, O oh Lord, and it says thou, but I'm going to read it so you can understand to have a little clarity. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of mine head. I cry unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Selah. Mm -hmm. I, lay, I laid me down and slept. I just say, I laid down and slept. I awakened, for the Lord sustained me. Mm, that's verse 5. Verse 6. I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people that have set themselves against me round about me. Verse 7 says, Arise, O Lord, save me, my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies. That means the Lord said, Vengeance is his. 
The Lord said he will take care of your enemies. And this just proves it in verse 7. Psalms 3 verse 7. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation, verse 8. Salvation belongs unto the Lord. The blessing is upon thy people. Stay alive. And I wanted to touch on verse um, 3. Psalms 3 verse 3. Because that's the one I used to reference um, pull back and these distractions. But thou, O Lord, so I'm going to say it personally, but you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. And the, here it says mine head, but my head. And just so you can get that, I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version because I know some people sometimes don't understand or have a little trouble understanding the King James Version. So let me read it for you in the Amplified Version. And I'm coming from a couple of different um, devices. But I'm going to read it to you. Psalms 3, verse 3. And this is, um. okay, I'm going to go with NIV. But you, Lord, are a shield around me. My glory, the one who lifts my head high. And this is the NIV version. So I'm going to get back to this. Um, mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to get back to pull back. And I'm going to give you a couple of things to pull back from that we need to pull back from. Pull back from the lies of this world. Pull back from distractions. Pull back from fear. Pull back from doubt. Pull back from negativity. And when I say negativity, I mean negative people, negative places, and negative things in your life that that keep you in bondage or um, try to keep you from moving forward. Um, so change your circle. Change your environment. Pull back from anything that is negative. Anything that's keeping you from going forward, that's keeping you from thinking clearly, that's disturbing your peace, pull back from it. It may be a relationship that you're in. Pull back from it. It may be, and not just relationship, you know, with a significant other. It may be some friendship that you have to pull back from. Because, you know, we, we do outgrow each other. Sometimes jealousy sets in and sometimes people just don't have anything good to say. And instead of um, keeping their mouth closed <laughs> because they don't have anything good to say, they come with you with all this negative stuff. And negative things can be draining. Negative things can distract you. Negative things can wear you out. <laughs> And the enemy uses people for that as well. Pull back from lack of confidence. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? And I'm, I'm not talking about what somebody else has said. I'm not talking about what you have been through. Do you know who you are? Do you know that you are a child of the Most High God? Do you know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made? Do you know that you are made in the image of Jesus Christ? Do you know who you are? Do you know that you are beautiful? Do you know that you are one of a kind? Do you know that? I just need you to get that down in your spirit. Do you know who you are? Do you? Pull back from the naysayers. Pull back from unhealthy relationships. I touched on that. But pull back from unhealthy relationships. I don't care if it's your siblings. Pull back from them. I don't care if it's your parents. Sometimes we got to distance ourselves from our siblings, our parents, our cousins. Any unhealthy relationship at this point in time in your life. Pull back from it. Any unhealthy relationship where people aren't adding value to you, pull back from it. Any unhealthy relationship, let me just say this. If you don't have anybody in your life that will pray for you or with you, but let me just break it down to you that will pray for you, that don't mind praying for you, interceding on your behalf when you are going through, get rid of them. 
<laughs> get rid of those type of people because not only are you are you praying for other people you need somebody to pray for you sometimes because you know sometimes you get to that point that you don't know what to pray for you know you get in that moment you might be having a heart she'll get you some friends some relationships with people who are going to stand in the gap for you who don't mind lifting you up and encouraging you who don't mind interceding for you and i'm not talking about this little lord bless the lord keep them i'm talking about some who don't mind getting on their knees getting on their face turning down their plate for you kind of friends that's the type of friends we need so pull back from unhealthy relationships pull back from those who <laughs> mm, from those who come against you pull back from people who come against you pull back from people who despitefully use you but as you pull back from them don't seek evil for evil because you know God said vengeance is his but what you do is go on your knees and go in prayer for them pray for their healing pray for their deliverance pray for God to regulate their mind you know pray for their thoughts Pray for their speech. Pray that the Lord will open their eyes up and that they will see clearly. Most importantly, pray that he open their ears up so that they can hear from him. So don't be mad when people come against you. Excuse this noise. Um, so when people come against you, just pray for them. Forgive them. Forgive them and pray for them. Pull back from people with a distorted mindset. And please, you hear this noise in the background. I don't know what they're doing <laughs> in the next building over there. But um, excuse me for the noise. Um, pull back from a distorted mindset. You know, when you have a distorted mindset, your mind is all over the place. It means that you are, you know, your, your mind, your brain is in overload. You're constantly thinking. You're constantly thinking. You're not giving yourself time to rest and not just rest physically, but you're not giving yourself time to rest in God and allow God to be in your life to be God in your life and allow God to be in control because you know a lot of times we want to we want to help God out. He doesn't need our help. And then when we have a distorted mindset, you know, we don't make wise decisions. We don't make good choices. We don't make wise decisions. You know, there's like a, dis a person with a distorted mindset is um, unstable in their thinking and unstable in their in their ways. So pull back from a distorted mindset. Pull back from disappointments. Pull back from disappointments. And when you get disappointed by people, don't go out there trying to pay them back. Pray for them. Yes, they hurt you. Pray for them. Forgive them and pray for them. And one thing, don't expect you from other people. Don't expect you from other people. Yes, you may go over and above. You may be a nurturer like me. You may be a giver like me. You may have a heart of compassion like me. You may have the gift of helps like me, like you just love helping people or you just want to help people but in that how many of you know that you do we do go through disappointments we do get hurt we we get hurt but we can't allow that to deter us from what god wants us to do i'm sorry about these um, messages coming in um we don't want that to deter us from what god wants us can what wants us to do or will have us to do so pull back from disappointments. Change your circle of people. And don't allow the enemy to keep pulling your strings, to keep frustrating you, to keep irritating you, to keep upsetting you. Pull back from those disappointments. You know, it's like they say, um, what is it? <laughs> three strikes, you're out. Sometimes we go past those three strikes. And sometimes we don't pay attention to the red flags that are placed before us when people do things. My dad always tell me a leopard never changes his spots. So when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. I'm one of those people I always try to see the good in people. And it has set me up for some hurt and disappointment. But hey, pull back from disappointments. Pull back from your past because you are not your past. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you became a new creature. 
in Christ Jesus. You became a new person in the kingdom of God. So old things have passed away. You should have a new mindset. You should have a new walk. You should have a new talk. You should have a new pep in your step. You should have a new song in your heart to sing. You should have new things. I'm not saying everything is going to go away at once. But when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you start walking with him, yes, the trials and tribulations and the tests are going to come. But you have that joy, that unspeakable joy. So you are not your past. I don't care what you did. I don't care if you had a child and didn't finish high school. I don't care if you used to drink. I don't care if you used to smoke. I don't care if you do drugs. I don't care whatever you did. I don't care if you were promiscuous. I don't care if you stole, you lied, you cheat. You are not your past. You know why? Because Jesus Christ died for that. He paid for all of that for you. He paid for your sins. God has forgiven you, so forgive yourself because you are not your past. Walk in your newness. Walk in your new season. So pull back from your past or people who try to hold you and still categorize you as your past because you are not your past. You are a new creature, a new person. Pull back from people who don't appreciate you, baby, because if you don't, that's a hard lesson to learn because you don't pull you. Okay, it's like this. Okay, well, let me just continue to be who I am. And I believe in treating people the way you want to be treated. You know, but sometimes we keep going, we keep going, we keep doing, we keep doing. But who's getting hurt? We are. Because that person who doesn't appreciate you, they're going on about their business. They're content with what they're doing. Mm, they're content with what they're doing. But you're still sitting up there like, oh, well, let me, um, let me see about doing this. And they didn't say, you know, and sometimes it weighs on you. Sometimes it weighs on you like, hey, did they really, really, really recognize or realize what I did for them or all that I do for them? If they don't appreciate you, pull back from them. Go on about your business. You know, it makes me think about um, Jesus when he wasn't accepted in his own hometown. And he said, if a prophet, and I think it was Jesus who said it, but if you're a prophet isn't accepted in your own city, shake the dust from your feet. Go on about your business. So for those who don't appreciate you, shake the dust from your feet. Go on about your business. Appreciate you. Love on you. Know your worth. And just realize you did what you had, what you could do for them or what you had to do in that season for them. They didn't appreciate you then. Don't worry about it. Just go on. Don't try to remind them of what you did. Don't try to make them see what you did. Just go on about it because you know God sees all. God sees all. He knows all. He knows our heart. He knows if we're doing it with a, a motive. He knows if we're doing it genuinely from our heart. He knows if we're doing it to be recognized. God sees all and he knows all. So if they don't appreciate you, pull back from them. I wish you could see this last clip. But it is a lady. And this one says pull back. And apparently she's outside and it's raining and she's like this. And she has that smile on her face. And it's just like the rain is just hitting her face. Like she has pulled back. She has released it. And she has pulled back from whatever it was that was hindering her. She has pulled back from whatever it was that was keeping her in bondage. Because she's like this. And that rain is just falling. That lets you know that she is free. She is free. So set yourself free. <laughs> And pull back. And that brings me to the next slide. Pull back and set yourself free. So pull back from anything in your life that disturbs your peace. Anybody that disturbs your peace, pull back from them. Father, I thank you for giving us your perfect peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, I thank you for teaching us how to love unconditionally. Teaching us how to love without motive. Teaching us how to love without always looking for something back. 
Teach us how to love like you, Lord. So, Father, I thank you that your love endures forever. So, scriptures I gave was Psalms 3 and 3 and um, suggest that you read the whole chapter. I'm not going to read the next one, but it's Psalms 136 because that one is kind of love. But Psalms 136 talks about how God loves and endures. But I'm going to touch on a couple of them because it wouldn't be right if I don't. But um, Psalms 136 has 26 verses. So I'm not going to read them all, but I will read a couple. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto God, who are the God, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endure forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endure forever. So please read Psalms 136 and it will bless you because God love endures forever. And it's going to endure until the end of time, until we are no longer here. And even when we are no longer here, as long as the earth is here, God love endures forever. Um, 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 8, but I focused on, I centered on um, 13 verse 4, but you know it tells us, that's the love chapter. It tells us what love is and what love is not. So I'm going to touch on a couple of those for you. But one thing we know, love is not boastful. Love is not prideful. Love is not puffed up. You know, hey, let me just read you a couple of them, and then I'm going to close. And I thank you all for tuning in. So, 1 Corinthians 13, and that should be, it actually should have been. Um, and then another one. I'm going to have to go back and read that too, because it wasn't supposed to be in Chronicles. Yeah, here. Okay, so first Corinthians 13. And we are here. In a minute. Boom. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me. Why do I keep coming first Chronicles, baby? I'm gonna have to read that one. Y'all forgive me. Excuse me on this one. I'll say that page. But let me go on here. I keep flipping to that for a reason. I'll read it. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. And verse 5. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love, verse 6, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth, verse 7. It always protects, always trusts, always hope, always preserves. Love never fails, verse 8. And I'm going to stop right there. Um, I didn't finish reading verse 8. But you see what love is? So for those who come against you, those who don't appreciate you, continue to show them love. And just pull back from them. But in your pulling back, don't mistreat them. Treat them the way that you want to be treated. Continue to show love because, hey, if you look at it and the truth be told, if God treated us, The way we treated some other people, we would be messed up. If God, if we did wrong and God held that against us, you know, we got a long, God, we have a long list, probably two, three, four, five, ten, twelve lists of wrongdoings of every time that we've fallen short. But he doesn't throw that up in our face. He doesn't have his list in. Okay, Manisha. 
You fell short today. Okay, Manisha. You cut somebody out yesterday. Okay, Manisha. You remember when you had um when you had um <laughs> Whoo Okay, Manisha. You remember when you had a child out of wedlock? Okay, Manisha, you remember when you was over there having sex and you weren't married? Okay, Manisha, you remember. You know, he will have a list going on and on and on. Okay, Manisha. And you remember, you remember, you remember. He is not doing that. He has forgiven us for our past sins. He has forgiven us for the things that we have done. Jesus paid the price for that. So stop holding on to your past and don't keep records of what other people do for you. Because that's not love. Honestly, it's control. I feel like it's a way of control and manipulation. And that's not love. So I pray that this video has blessed you. Again, it was winning wins they pulled back. But since I didn't get a chance to do it until today on Saturday, we are still focusing on pulling back. And that was the message. Um, pull back. Pull back from anything that disturbs your peace. Pull back from anyone or anything that keeps you in bondage. Again, I pray you enjoyed this message. I pray that it speaks to you and speaks to someone else. And as I kept going back to um, First Chronicles, I'm going to have to read that because there may be a nugget or so in there. I will come back next week um, and do another um, short video. I will, if it's God's will, I'll be that I'm here. I will come back and do a video. But enjoy your Saturday evening. Love on somebody, love on yourself, appreciate you, and rest in the goodness of the Lord. Have a good evening.